Dr. Levine, thanks for joining us. We're talking about something we've only heard about in uh, you know, in cliches, don't let the bed bugs bite. But once again, bed bugs are in the news and we're talking about them. What is a bed bug and where does it come from? Well, <clears throat> a bed bug is an insect. Um, and it's a, a parasite. A lot of people know what a parasite is. It's it's an organism that lives off of another organism, in this case humans, and, uh, and, and so they feed off human blood. They take blood meals uh, from human beings. Um, uh, where they come from, it's not like they come from one single location. They're fairly widespread, and so uh, it's not like they're only present in certain countries or certain geographic locations or uh, certain environments that you can find bed bugs just about anywhere. What do they look like? Well, they're, uh, they're visible, uh, but very tiny. They're about the size of an apple seed. Uh, they're kind of flat and shaped like an oval. They, of course, have legs as an insect. And, uh, of course, they can change their shape uh, when they take a blood meal. So when they fill up uh, with blood, they swell up and they have a more reddish appearance rather than that kind of brown uh, bug-like appearance. And why are we hearing so much about bed bugs now? Well, um, to, to use a term that we often refer to uh, when we have a condition or situation that has been dormant for a while and come back, they are, uh, we're experiencing a resurgence of bed bugs, meaning that for many years, it wasn't really very much of a problem, uh, but now we're having a lot more of these around. And uh, we don't know exactly why that is, but we have some ideas why that may be. Um, these uh, bed bugs uh, were fairly uh, prominent, oh, uh, during the period of World War II or so. And uh, during that time, we used quite a bit of uh, pesticides to control a lot of insects. Uh, bed bugs being among them. Well, as that utilization of pesticides fell by the wayside, it's believed that more recently those insects have had an opportunity to resurge. How do I know if I have bed bugs in my home? Well, um, they're not easily seen, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, often the telltale signs uh, are what we appreciate uh, as individuals. So. Um, because they have a tendency to feed at night uh, when people are asleep, and the, and the way they feed, uh, a little bit like a mosquito, is that uh, they inject an anesthetic into the site where they're going to uh, draw blood from. Uh, they also have what we call an anticoagulant, helps get the blood out easily without clotting. But that, that bite uh, leaves a remnant, uh, typically a little swollen bite location, like a bite from any other kind of insect. But often people will have a series of these, and sometimes in some individuals they're uh, more problematic than in others. Assuming uh, the bad news, there is an infestation in one's home, how is it treated? Well, um, I think carefully uh, is probably the best answer to that question. Um, you know, uh, people. Uh, often want to leap to uh, treating insects and nuisance bugs with pesticides. And there is a role for pesticides in the management of uh, bed bugs, but really pesticides should be part of what we call an integrated pest management program. Now let me try to explain what that is exactly. Uh, what that means is using a variety of methods to help control the infestation. One of the problems with bed bugs is they don't have to feed very often. They might go without a meal for months. Uh, they can live in quite a wide range of temperatures. So um, it, they're, they're not easily gotten rid of. So you have to do things like uh, carefully clean uh, the furniture, uh, avoid reinfestation uh, wherever the source may have been from, let's say, uh, clothing from outside, a piece of furniture from outside, luggage that has been infested somewhere else. Um, sometimes the clothing and so forth can be treated with uh, high heat, like in the dryer, for a period of 15, 20 minutes to a half hour, because they usually can exist up to a temperature of about 115 degrees or so, and then they die pretty, pretty quickly. 
Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned, there's a role for pesticides, but a cautious role because pesticides can be dangerous and really should be applied uh, either very carefully in accordance with instructions or certainly if an external firm is going to be used at a licensed firm who knows what they're doing. You touched on this earlier, uh, but let's flush it out a little bit. What are the signs, symptoms of a bed bug bite and how do you treat it? Okay. Well, a, um, a, a bed bug bite is not, in most cases, not uh, unlike uh, other kinds of uh, insect bites. So uh, you'll often see a, 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 a swollen red bump uh, or a series of these in a row uh, where the bed bugs have bitten uh, the individual. And there may be a small impression uh, or a location where the actual bite occurred in the center of that. Uh, often there may not be. Uh, sometimes people have a more significant reaction to those bites where uh, the skin lesions are much larger. Um, and uh, that, that probably is one of the most significant problems. Obviously, the, the best way to treat those are locally, meaning trying to take care of the bites locally, uh, maybe with cool compresses, certainly keeping them clean to avoid getting them infected, that sort of thing. But the major method of treatment is to try to control the infestation to keep them from recurring. Are bed bugs like ticks and mosquitoes? Are they, are they the carriers, the vectors for other diseases? Um, actually, uh, as far as we know, the answer to that question is no. Uh, that it, they, they are, as I mentioned, a parasite. Uh, they're a parasite only on the outside of the body. They take a blood meal, but they are not carriers of other kinds of bacteria and organisms uh, like mosquitoes and ticks can be. Um, and so we don't normally see the transmission of other kinds of diseases from bed bugs or other kinds of in infectious diseases, I should say, from bed bugs. Is there anything I can do to keep them from infesting my house? Well, the, yes, I think there are some things uh, that one can do to try to avoid uh, bed bug infestations. Um, obviously, routine maintenance issues and inspection, uh, making sure that there's not excessive clutter, that cracks in walls, floors, uh, other locations are taken care of to avoid entry points for bed bugs. Uh, certainly, one item in particular is to avoid bringing in uh, cloth or clothing materials, uh, luggage, or even used furniture uh, that may already have an infestation. That's a, a ready point of entry or an easy way for bed bugs to enter the home. So, you know, sometimes people have a tendency to reclaim old furniture, uh, to pick up old furniture, that sort of thing. Uh, one, people should exercise caution uh, definitely when doing that. And of course, uh, in travel circumstances, uh, you know, being, being certain to uh, go to locations and that uh, you feel comfortable, do not have infestations uh, to avoid becoming a carrier of the bed bug from one location to another. On the subject of travel, nice segue. How do I check to see if a hotel or someplace that I'm staying has a bed bug infestation? Is that possible? Well, that's a kind of a growing thing, I think. There are certainly some websites out there people can look at uh, to try to determine whether or not uh, a, there has been report of a particular uh, uh, hotel or domiciliary or something of that nature that uh, may have an infestation. Um, there are also, as I understand it now, some uh, web applications or some phone, some iPhone or mobile phone applications uh, where you can search for locations where there are concentrations of reports for bed bugs. Um, so those may be some ways uh, to, to actually certainly uh, look at possibilities for where infestations might exist. That's very, very good information. Thanks for your time today, Doctor. My pleasure very much. Uh, I'm glad to be here.